All right, so this is a suggestion via Discord. The name of the video is uh, Immigration Deal Hangs in the Balance as the United States Border Crisis Divides the Country. Yeah, it's pretty much divided right now, bro. Absolutely. It's an issue dominating the headlines and dividing the nation, immigration. So how did we get here? And what can be done about it? We've asked our Martha Teichner to take a closer look. All right, let's go. Look at just about any of these people, any mother carrying a child, and you can be pretty sure they've walked the length of whole countries. Along the southern U.S. border, where the razor wire meets the river, a humanitarian catastrophe meets an immigration enforcement horror show, Tinder and Spark which have ignited what is now the nation's number one political firefight. If that bill were the law today, I'd shut down the border right now and fix it quickly. The latest flashpoint. Oh, yeah? Over that proposed bipartisan border. Well, I guess he kind of just did right now, like like today, didn't he? He finally did something to kind of resolve the issue slightly, but still uh, not enough. Their deal. Likely DOA, after it's former something. president and candidate Donald Trump weighed in. There is zero chance I will support this horrible open borders betrayal of America. Meanwhile, the migrants keep coming. Last year, the United States spent more than $36 billion on immigration enforcement, more than for all other federal law enforcement combined. Since the Biden administration took office in 2021, there have been at least 6.3 million migrant encounters at U.S. borders. 2.4 million of those people have been let in, mainly asylum seekers apprehended, then turned loose to wait for their court dates, and eligible for work permits after six months. A big incentive to come. Absolutely. Until your case is decided, it will be a very long time, and that does function as a pull factor, yes. We're talking about anywhere from four to six, seven, sometimes more years than that. Yeah. Doris wow. Meisner was commissioner of the U.S. Immigration and Naturalization Service during the Clinton administration and is now a senior fellow at the nonpartisan Migration Policy Institute in Washington, D.C. What the data show us are that if you are in the country for more than a year, it's highly unlikely that you'll be returned, even when your case is turned down, if it's turned down. You'll remain here in a long-term limbo. The immigration court backlog is currently 3.3 million, a third of them asylum seekers. Of the asylum cases decided last year, more than eight out of 10 were denials. Why don't they do it legally? There is no line to get into to do it legally. We bring a million or more people into the country every year. Two thirds of those people have a relative in the United States. We as a nation are forcing people to show up at the border, get apprehended and apply for asylum. You could certainly state it that way. What if okay, uh, yes and no, I'd say, because again, guys, I've, I 100% um, have lived in Spain since like 2015. I've been going back and forth uh, from Spain and Amer any United States of America for the last two years. Uh, six months here, six months there. My wife is from Spain. Um, my son is from Spain, right? And um, we did not really have to do the majority of this but i understand um you know a family thing but she just she also just said uh two out of three have family here so it, it really comes down to just being able to find like an adequate sponsor that is living above the poverty line that's the number one thing here you can't bring in if you are it, it, suffering through poverty you really can't afford to bring someone else so maybe they shouldn't be coming Right. Uh, but instead, everyone is basically just skipping the line completely and disregarding um, everything that we have actually set up. Right. Just completely ignoring it. Um, and uh, that's probably the worst thing that they can do. But they know, like, like she said, as long as they can stay here for a year, they're not going back. 
Um, and the reason why eight out of 10 asylum cases have been declined because, is because these are not asylum seekers. The overwhelming majority of people that are coming are economic migrants, guys. They're not asylum seekers. We got a giant, messy catch-22, thanks to an outdated and politicized immigration system. Where a nation says, if you want to flee and you're fleeing oppression, you should come. The accusation that what candidate Joe Biden said in 2019 was a big green light for migrants. What if I told you not everybody wants to solve the problem? What if I told you it is very lucrative, you know, both financially now, but also politically for so many people to be in this quagmire, to see these images. Texas Congressman Tony Gonzalez, a Republican, represents the epicenter of the migrant crisis, Eagle Pass. How can we just stop? My community needs help, immediate help. Show me your district. The 823 miles along the border, here's Eagle Pass, right in here is Eagle Pass. Where that ugly showdown is still playing out over who controls the border, Texas or the federal government. And speaking of political theater, by busing tens of thousands of migrants to already overwhelmed big cities with Democratic mayors, Texas Governor Greg Abbott has riled the likes of New York's Eric Adams. This issue will destroy New York City. Do you stand by that? Without a doubt. Uh, here in the city, 169,000. They cannot work to provide themselves. We have to provide food, shelter, clothing, cleaning, education, health care. That comes with a serious price tag, $12 billion mm -hmm. over three years that is, that's coming out of our city coffers. We're better than this, America. Um, but you're the one saying you're a sanctuary city, right? So, I mean, I get it. Absolutely. We're better than this, America. I, absolutely, I, I agree. Right. But here's the dilemma here. These these individuals, these migrants are coming in to Texas. Uh, no one is helping Texas. Right. So what is Texas doing? Sending them to people that say that they're sanctuary cities. So since New York is a sanctuary city, don't worry. Uh, we're going to go ahead and send um, as many migrants as we possibly can to uh, New York City. Chicago, you're a sanctuary city. Don't worry. We're going to go ahead and send as many uh, migrants as, as we humanly can to Chicago, Denver. All right. So all of these places are, are calling themselves sanctuary cities. And because you're doing that, um, you should have no problem. Right. But the fact is, is that it's easy to say you're a sanctuary city when uh, you're not attached to any meaningful border, right? It's easy to say that. So what, I guess the point is here, um, it's a little hypocritical. You cannot say that every place should be completely fine if you're not the one being bombarded by it. Texas is. So, because you're fine with it, they're sending them. How much milk do you produce a day? <laughs> Uh, around 90,000 pounds which a is day. a day, wow. which is 45 tons of milk. At Walter Moore's Dairy Farm in southern Pennsylvania, two and a half hours from New York City's migrant mess, you can see a whole different side of the crisis. Ooh, copyright. I don't know why you'd be playing randomly music, bro. We got to fast forward. Field has described the labor shortage as severe. The reason? Only seasonal farm workers can get visas. Dairy farming is year-round 24-7. Moore says change the law so badly needed migrants are allowed into the United States to do the work. Do you know farmers? So a capitalist uh, venture. Um, the thing about it is, yeah, I definitely agree with the concept of an H-1B visa. Um, it definitely needs to be at least... Um, six months on six months off at, uh, at the very least uh, that would absolutely help a lot of a lot of uh, businesses like his right if that's the case but let's just not say oh who cares about the border when you run a business that needs employees that generally are not going to end up being american because you don't pay them enough for what it is and if you were to pay americans to do the same job um a gallon of milk would be like 30 dollars. that's the reality right um, and so that's why the concept of H-1B visas are a great idea, right? Build some type of like staffing agency in countries where people just want to work, right? You can give them six months in America, um, you know, on and off, let's say six months in America uh, to come and do this job, pay them, and then they go back to uh, where they're from, 
right? You can set up these agencies if, um, if they, if we had, uh, I guess, any intelligence here, that'd be the smartest thing to do. Set up an agency that, that brought people to the United States of America in a lot of these countries uh, for six months through our H-1B visa, guys. Are allowed Problem into solved. the United States to do the work. Do you know farmers who have left the dairy industry because they couldn't find the workers that they need? Yes. You know, honestly, this is, we've been talking about this for 15 or 20 years. Nothing happens. Nothing happens. You always have to look at Americans don't want those jobs. the political incentives lie. Jay Johnson was Homeland Security Secretary, responsible for U.S. borders. In 2013, the last time bipartisan immigration reform legislation came close to passing, but then failed. And ever since then, any effort to compromise has been deemed weak, has been deemed a political liability. We asked Johnson about a fix. There's a lot you can do to surge resources, which solves the problem in the immediate term, in the short term. But so long as families are so desperate to flee uh, violence, poverty, corruption, they're going to keep coming. You've also got to continually send the message that if you come here, we will send you back. His solution? Mandatory. Very similar to the framework of the bipartisan border deal. Address the things that serve as magnets in our immigration system. Address the backlog. Address the standards by which someone can qualify on the front end for asylum and then go into that multi-year waiting period to see whether or not they ultimately get it. More immigration judges, more asylum officers, more technology, more border patrol agents, all of those things. But That's always fair. with a view toward what our values are as Americans. We are a nation of immigrants. We spoke to Johnson at Ellis Island the very symbol of our immigrant heritage. Between 1892 and 1924, 12 million passed through its great hall. The space is being compared to the Roosevelt Hotel, where migrants are processed now in New York City. A lobby full of stories of how and why. But here, only one goal. Under the dictatorship, it was impossible to live in Venezuela. Meet Daniel, 24, a construction worker back in Venezuela. He was earning $10 a month, max. A month? A month. He tried several times to cross the border before finally making it in December. He understands very well that for his economic conditions, they don't provide asylum. Economic conditions. So he will look into other alternative methods. Daniel. And that's the overwhelming majority. It's the reason why eight out of 10 do not make it. Right here, this is it right here. Perfect, perfect example, bro. Like every other migrant in this room. It's money. Intends to stay, no matter what. Let's come together, find the practical, pragmatic solutions to controlling our border. It's what the American people want. Yeah, the overwhelming majority of Americans are going to say the same thing. Um, and, and that's just the reality, guys. Um, I don't think a single person would actually f be upset at all. There are going to be some crazies. There are going to be some crazies, right? Just for real. But I don't think a single person would, act, would actually be upset um, with someone that actually needs asylum. All right? And the exact meaning of it at least right no one would everyone would be like sure fine no problem but the problem is the reality of the situation is that's not why they're coming what this is the reason why eight out of ten get sent back all right but all right, either way listen you guys all have an absolutely amazing day enjoy your day thoroughly guys before we go are you guys subscribed to the other channels logical movie reviews with mr l boyd along with mr l boyd music both are found in the description check it out